Welcome garden friends. Thanks so much for taking a little bit of time away from your garden to come visit mine. I hope you're having as much fun watching them as I am making them. We have a lot to do today. Let's get started with some organic pest control. Well check out these perennial hibiscus blooms. They are the queen of the late summer garden. But if you look closely at the foliage, I'm getting lots of questions about this. You can see that sawfly larvae are just going nuts on it and basically skeletonizing these leaves. And so basically for organic pest control, what we're trying to do is first not panic, identify the problem, and that's so important. I get lots of questions about people that are using the wrong products for the wrong problem, whether it's a fungicide for a pest problem or vice versa. And so we know this is sawfly larva. It's working its way up the plant. And so we want to deal with the bad bug without messing up the good bug. And we're using something called Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. I feel like a model. Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. But I use a lot of this. And it, its active ingredient is something called spinosad. And what we're going to do is we're going to spray it on these leaves that haven't been eaten yet. When the sawfly larva eats it, then it affects its nervous system, and then the, the pest stops feeding and passes away. So we want to get all over this leaf, and it can't hurt us. One, one word of, of caution, though, is we want to do this early in the morning before the pollinators start flying, because we don't want them to be any part, part of this and keep it off the flowers if possible. Once this is on here and dried and the pest eats it, we won't have any more problems and we're not affecting the good bugs or our soil life underneath. That's all there is to it. And right next door, I just wanted to show off this hardy banana. You should grow this, it's so easy. Earlier in the season, we took one of these out of here, gave it to a friend. But by the end of the season, this is gonna be another maybe five, 10 feet tall. And it just has this tropical look. And when we get to the end of the season, I'll show you how we make it last over winter. But man, it is cool looking. All right, let's do a little planting. Keep planting. Well, you know my mantra of keep planting, keep planting? I'm gonna start off with some weird stuff. This is Singera rat tail radish. It is grown and not for the root, but for its seed pod, very cool. Auroch, red gold, it's a type of green. Arugula, wild rocket, it's just a wild version of the arugula that I love, grows like a weed. That's pretty normal, butter crunch lettuce from seed. And a really cool, strange radish called China Rose that's grown for the fall that gets to be the size of maybe a softball. One of the things I've been experimenting with is to use one bed for many crops. I've got four small hot peppers I put in here late, maybe a couple weeks ago. The soil's already been improved, so it's ready to go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle some of that arugula seed down here and some of the lettuce seed. We'll see what sprouts. And I'm trying to make sort of a living mulch underneath here. As that lettuce and arugula gets going, the peppers will be done whenever it gets cold. And we'll see if we can use the same area to grow lots of different things. So the first thing is to get this straw off for now, and then we'll put in our seeds. The peppers are actually doing pretty good. So I'll start with the arugula. And this stuff sprouts pretty easily, and there's probably, geez, I would guess a thousand seeds in there. We're just gonna kinda lightly sprinkle them on this side. Maybe 2,000. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put my butter crunch lettuce seeds back here. With the arugula and the lettuce, there's a lot of seeds in there. We'll be thinning, but that's okay. These seeds have been around for a couple years. They're, they're ready to go. Start with something new next time. Probably sow again in another couple weeks. Okay and just kind of we've been lucky in this garden we have 
got a little bit of rain. That poor little guy. And then whenever you throw seeds down, water and keep it moist until they sprout. Hopefully we'll get some more rain. And for now, I'm not gonna put the straw back on. Like I said, we'll see what sprouts and see what, how much thinning we need to do and then we can add some straw, especially around the peppers themselves. All right, I think those crazy radishes next. So this is the Sinjara, I think I'm saying that right, rat's tail radish seeds. And I'm taking a chance here. Radishes in general just love cool weather. I usually don't sow them until September, but because this one is growing what's on the top, we're harvesting what's on the top, I'm gonna give it a try. And we've got some Mexican sunflowers here, some tomatoes here. I got a little bit of space. And I just wanna see if I can make this work. You know, all I'm really investing, and the compost is already here, is a little bit of time and a few seeds and I think it'll work. I'm gonna save these for September. Same thing, kinda of get on here. And when they sprout, I'll show you what we do with the thinnings. Use them as microgreens, which is fun. This is our China Rose Radish, and it's one that I've grown for a few years that I love. It was originally like a livestock plant, but they found out that it stays tender even though it gets so big. And I don't want to use all these seeds. These will definitely need thinned because anytime you're growing a root crop, you've got to have room for that root to do its thing. And this is a good example of, there's always room to find one other place to plant. I've been looking around the garden uh, after I announced the project of, of planting the seeds and looking, okay, where are we gonna plant these? <laughs> and so we got a little, little bed here filled with compost. And it's the same procedure we just used. I'm gonna get these ticked in, watered, and then we're gonna look around the garden a little bit, at, see what's happening. There's some good things going on even after that major invasion by the deer. Our experiment with early planted peas, peas that I started a month before I normally do, is going well. I'm worried if we get a real hot August that it's going to be a problem, but let's see what happens. Of course, in my crazy garden, they're growing up golf clubs, and I just love it. These flocks are supposed to be filled with flowers that look like that flocks, but a month ago, when those deer did get in here, and they have not been in since, I have fortified my fence. But what has happened was really interesting. Where the deer cut these flocks off, they have split now into three different bud producing stems and so they might have done us a favor <laughs> we might get more flowers out of this and this is one of my favorite phloxes it's just it's crazy it's something so bad in the garden it might turn out to be something good the summer of lily love continues with black beauty released in 1957 and if a bulb is released in 1957 and it's still around today i got this from a place called old house gardens they sell all sorts of cool heirloom bulbs. If it's around for that long, it's, there's something special about it. It's, it's tough as nails. It should not be doing this well in these conditions. It doesn't get the sun it loves. But I love the form of this Turk's cap lily looking down, this orange one, which I don't know its name. I got it on sale at a nursery years ago. I just love that form, how it looks down, and a little fragrance too. I know sometimes gardening can be frustrating, but it can also be wondrous. <laughs> Last year, I planted an impatient in here, not really knowing if this would work, but not only did that plant last year thrive, but this year I had this just sitting to the side and I saw that 
from a seed that last year's plant left, this sprouted. So now that I've seen it, I'll start watering <laughs> and fertilizing and we'll see what it turns out to be at the end of the season. Now it's time for Talking Trees from the Davy Tree Expert Company. I'm joined again by Rob Krueljack. He is an assistant district manager at the North Pittsburgh office of the Davy Tree Expert Company. And today, it's all about safety. Yeah, I just got done training some employees, and that's one of the big differences Davey, you know, has between other companies. You know, we take a, a real hard line on safety, safety first, and, and doing training so our guys are when they're on their prop when they're on your property, they're as safe as possible. So starting off with this sort of stuff, tell me what we're doing here. So we always, you know, when we're set up on a road anywhere, we'll have our cones out and we'll have our signs out to alert, you know, everybody that, you know, workers are ahead and that there's something going on to protect us and, and the public. And protecting you. Yep. Yeah, I've got my hard hat, one of my favorite hats, safety glasses. You know, uh, when we're on the site and we're using chainsaws, we have our chaps on. So, ear protection also, which yes. is important. Let's, you guys are trained to do this. Mm -hmm. I want to first start with the chaps because mm -hmm. this is something I see you guys wearing all the time, but I don't see guys at home wearing these. When you're using a chainsaw, this is important, right? This is A number one. I, I, I've given, a dozen or so pairs to, to clients and friends who have chainsaws. I'm like, this is $100 that could save your life. Um, most of your chainsaw cut accidents at home happen from your waist down. This will, will save you from uh, some stitches or maybe, you know, something worse. And then at home, this too, ear protection, certainly eye protection and some type of he head protection. Absolutely. Brain bucket, we call it. <laughs> right, brain bucket, <laughs> crash helmet. Um, yes, yeah, so you, you can pick up a whole set of gear, helmet, uh, chaps at your local, you know, uh, uh, steel dealer, Husqvarna dealer. When you buy it in the package, you have everything you need as a homeowner to be safe. If you want to do some things around the house yourself, there's nothing wrong with it, but be safe while you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about this. Never get up on a ladder with a chainsaw, right? It is the classic homeowner accident, yes. Yeah, you know, um, the ladder on. goes up, they cut a branch off, the tips hit and the branch springs back and knocks the ladder out from under them down they go and it can be very, very dangerous. How about a few more safety tips for homeowners? Um, if it's out of your comfort zone, call a professional. Um, you know, yeah, that's probably the yeah, best one. Yes. Well, I can't tell you how many times that I've been with friends over these many years, mm -hmm. and especially when we were really young and stupid, up in a tree, you don't know what's going to happen with that branch. You know, get somebody who knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And talk a little bit more about all the training you guys go through. I mean, I've watched these guys work here, and it, it's safety is the number one thing. Yes, we want everybody to go home at the end of the day. Um, we're doing in-house training daily, but we also go out to Ken, Ohio, to our you know headquarters out there for some out, you know training with other groups from other territories and everything. So. You know, the, the more the better. So you're aware of all of these different circumstances that you can be you know, faced with on a daily basis. Uh, it, it's just a bad idea for me to even touch a chainsaw. So that's why I rely on guys like you. Awesome. Thanks Thank you so much, yep. Rob. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That's just how the YouTube analytics work, and I appreciate it. Until next week, keep planting, and we'll see you then.